Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm in the basement and I'm about to start making the cables for my battery bank. Uh, some time ago I bought some cable in an R2 part shop and it's rather thick. It should be good enough for going between the batteries. Actually it should be kind of overkill. And then I bought some of these small terminals um, to put on the cable. It really goes like this. We have the we have a terminal from from a battery here. We have a little bolt. We have these that goes on the terminal like that, probably more like that. And then we have the cable that goes into this. And then I wanted something to insulate this. So now I also got a bag of heat shrink. And how much did I get? I think I got enough. There's a lot here. I need to find out how much of this cable to put between the batteries and I don't think it's very much. I think it's just gonna be short pieces because I'm gonna line up the batteries so that there's as little cable as possible between the batteries. But I can't I kind of want a standard size for for the length of this of these cables so that they at least are the same length and this might come in handy uh, I was in the in the United States last year it's let's use this instead and for for filming purposes I got this it has centimeters on one side and it has inches on the other side so I can find a length in centimeters and I can go around and tell you how much that is in inches and inches are upside down upside down inches are for the Chinese people and centimeters are for the, <laughs> the rest of the world let's see how much would be appropriate I think something like this would be a good start so how long is that Twelve centimeters. Let's see how much twelve centimeters is in inches. Whoopsie. That's four point seven inches. I guess so we're gonna go with twelve centimeters, and I'll try and make one pair of these. Oh, enough for one bank, and if that turns out to be way too long I can just cut some off so we're gonna cut this at 12 centimeters I already uh, removed the insulation on this so I'm gonna make the 12 centimeters of the cable with the insulation on it so I am measuring this with the insulation and I'm cutting it right there And I'm removing some of the insulation. I'm gonna make each of the hint heat shrink pieces two centimeters wide. The cable is so hot down here that this is almost uh, heat shrunk by itself. Okay, the first one, I think I've found some ways to improve that because 
I thought that I could put the cable in there and just put in uh, soldering tin in this hole. And that didn't work out very well, so I think I'll have to put in some more tin at the beginning. And also get more tin on the cable itself. Very important to remember to get the next piece of heat shrink in here. And as far away from the heat as possible. And I'm still gonna see if I can fill up some tin from the other side. It might not work, but I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. That seemed to be okay. It's very hot right now. I'll just measure the resistance through this to make sure that there's nothing funny going on. It should be very close to zero. <laughs> but I'm gonna wait until it's cold because right now I can't touch this. I got a hot air gun and I'm gonna try and and, and shrink the heat shrink the last little bit. Yeah, it's hot. This is on low. That seems pretty good. That was easy. I didn't cut these straight. I could have done better. I'm gonna try and improve that for the next for the next ones. So let's measure the ohms. 0 0.1 ohms. Let's see the test leads themselves. Yeah, it's it's next to nothing. I'm not sure that I'm able to measure the the resistance in this, and these leads are a lot longer than this one. So I think this is good. It really doesn't take that long if you can do a bunch at a time and when you're not filming. I made a total of five pair of battery connecting thingies to put between the batteries. Uh, I forgot one important thing. Um, when you put on these, they don't really, you have to put them on straight in both ends so that they will line up. Although this cable is so flexible that, oh, that's a bad example. Uh, this one I've been straightening up, but um, I found one where I like, did like this. One was down and one was up, but it's, it's possible to stretch it around because this cable is, this cable is so soft. Uh, I think this cable is meant for hi-fi music in cars. So it has a lot of strings uh, and is very flexible. Yeah, this is a good example. This one is downwards and when we go over to the other side it comes out outwards. But you can always just do like this and they will be in the same spot. But yeah, the idea in here is to have four batteries like in a in a circle and and then the leads going up into the into the oops here and the oops is going to uh, convert the 48 volts into 220 volts i have put on the first connector way uh, i had the batteries out here and i placed them and i tightened it and for safety, I used a wrench and I put, I put duct tape around it, gaffer tape. 
so that uh, I'm not able to short circuit anything, which is rather important when working with big, powerful batteries like this. Um, also, I have kind of like an emergency cutter just there, so if anything weird should happen, I should be able to cut a cable. Okay, now I have three batteries mounted in here. It's a bit hard to see. There's not a lot of room for that cable. That That is way too long. I think I could have it could have been half that length and still made it quite easily. But I didn't know that. I might might think about doing some one shorter. Uh, this one is perfect over here. It's hard to see, but it's uh, you can see it in there. And, uh, it's good. And the last battery is going to be placed here. And hopefully, I'll have the opening out this way so that I can manage it and uh, have the diesel fader sitting here permanently and I can press it and see what the voltage is of the batteries and I still have some cables and the reason I only have three batteries and not four batteries is because I tested the batteries with the battery analyzer which is right here and it's turned out that a couple of my batteries weren't that good so instead of putting on bad batteries I rather want to see if I can fix something else get get another good battery but right now we're doing that in another video trying to get a good battery out of one of these bad ones and if that doesn't succeed I'll trade them in with my mechanics who um, is always willing to trade one old battery for another old battery and normally I can get a battery that is not that bad Thank you for watching this video. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can follow along and see what happens with this series. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.